Anyone want to have an idea, please just raise your hand and we'll give you a minute, inshallah, before Salah. But the sacrifice, we can, we can organize 20 million conference, speak a whole day, a whole month, a whole year. But are we ready to take the sacrifice? He said to my mothers and aunties, you can cry blood if you want to. But those children, I have given them sadaqah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Akbar. You sending them to somewhere you don't even know. We went to Algeria. He never been to Algeria. He don't know nobody there. And nobody know. We don't know anybody who know Algeria. He sent us there. We were disconnected five years. They never heard nothing, anything about us. They didn't know anything about us. For the second, for the sake of what? He wanted his kids to know this thing. To learn the thing. How much sacrifice are we willing, parents? And unless and until we're ready to sacrifice, there is no change. Absolutely. It's gonna get even worse. Because this system that I said a few minutes ago uh, to you is a very serious system. And they know us. They know what we want. They know that we're not serious. They know. And really they're banking on it. That makes their um, uh, system uh, very unique. We're making their system unique and work uniquely and so successful of getting our kids. Yes, it's the sacrifice. We need to make a sacrifice to teach our children. I'm not saying do not teach your children English language or uh, uh, science. science. Yes, we're not saying that. But what are we saying is, are we going to sacrifice? Or when are we going to sacrifice to take time to our, from our busy time and our time that we have for us to be successful and to gain whatever we, we gain need want to gain in this life to leave that and to have the kids to receive the ed proper education and 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 love it and honor it. <coughs> Most of parents they don't even honor this education. They just bring their kids because everybody else brings their kids. When their kids not doing good in the Islamic schools, the Imam is here, that's no big deal. But if the school, the kids are not doing good in the daytime school, the reports comes from the principal or from the teacher once or twice that your, your child is misbehaving in the school. And it's not doing good. Grades going down. In Africa, it's easy. They divorce your mom. Your mother's divorced right there. <laughs> you know, good. You, you and me. Yeah. I've seen people who fight and and disturb the, the woman at home because the child is not doing good at school. But a billion report can come from the sheikh, from the masjid, about your son about your child misbehaving and not paying attention in the masjid and not respecting, you know, uh, 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 the, the, the premises of the masjid of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, no big deal. Kids are growing up and seeing that. That we're emphasizing more. We're putting more uh, emphasis and putting more of that in this type of education and when it comes to the other one, it's no big deal. How many of us, when your kids come to Islamic school, try to check their books and try to see what ayah did they memorize or what, ayah, what did they learn? Very few. But when it comes to that, it's a whole different thing. We hire additional help. Am I right? Yes. Already some of us in private schools back in the Muslim countries, private school already, spend a lot of money on them. But at the same time, we hire additional teachers to study them, to help them study 
and help them understand their lessons. Tutoring. Tutoring. But when it comes to the, uh, the Islamic one, they're not willing to pay him, the teacher, what they pay the other uh, one who tutors their kids. Subhanallah. It's, 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 it's amazing. And I, 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 someone told me that one lady, subhanallah, some of it is, is, is just a kalimah to kufr. Well, he has to be like, mount to that. The attitude is very, 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 very uh, seriously scary when it comes to uh, how we uh, view and treat the knowledge of Islam that will allow you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, love Him. Therefore, worship Him the correct way, the right way, with the knowledge that gives you dunya. A lady hired a, a, a guy uh, to uh, tutor their, her, her children. And he, she also hired a, we call it Ustaz. Okay? <laughs> ustaz. To teach the kids after school the uh, Islamic study, Quran. He paying this. Very, very, very low. Very low. I can't even say the amount because subhanAllah, you're not even believing how much you pay the ustas. And pay this one a whole lot of money. Top dollar. The top dollar. So the ustas, now listen to this, the ustas, when he heard about this new teacher, you know, tutoring the English, that's given, is getting paid top dollar, and he's given no dollar. <laughs> so he went to the woman. Ask her um, if she, because she, you know, to increase his uh, salary. his salary. Astaghfirullah. She said to him, what? What did you say? I said, give me more money. Like you're paying this one. He said, she said to him, you compare yourself to him? You compare yourself to him? What you do, what you teach him, and what he teach him? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Only a shake. Yeah, milk shake. <laughs> no milk. <laughs> Half of it, no shake. Tea, no shake. <laughs> this one is strawberry shake and everything. You know about it. And I know some other ones. When I send my children back home, was struggling to pay top dollar for those stars. Some of my wife's friend telling her, oh, your husband is in America, got a lot of money, don't know what to do with it. And nobody pay those stars this type of money. But they can pay those who teach and tutor the English, the math, you know what I mean? All the subjects they think, uh, they, they know, you know, it will bring their children to the level that they want in their heart, dunya. <laughs> dunya. It's us. We neglected this knowledge that will allow these children to be tomorrow slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, I believe it's a hadith, the Sheikh is here. Allah, Allah, but it, it says that the Prophet وسلم, said, and Allah said in Hadith al Qursi, O oh, son of Adam, if you deny me your child when he or she was uh, young, I will deny you when they grow up. When you huh, deny me from your, your kids when they were little, you also will not benefit from them when they grow up. How to deny Allah these children is not to be serious of teaching them. Did he? And be serious about their manners. There has to be sacrifice. You cannot get it all. Yes, a dunya will akhira doratan. You focus 100% on this, you know, you will have a little left for the other one. So now you choose which one you put on. And you can do both. Yes? Mm -hmm. If you cannot do that, then uh, uh, you cannot do, no, then do both. You can you can do both. There's many of us, mashallah, uh, their kids, mashallah, are grown up with both. 
half is the Quran, mashallah, and then finish the school and go to college. It's many, mashallah, but it's the efforts of the parents. How much it is valued to you, the parents? How much is it worth, you know, to you, you the child, you, you the parents? And uh, uh, that's what it is. That will make all the difference. Now, so um, the only way to bring, uh, raise these children um, here in the United States or in, under the uh, Western atmosphere or anywhere in the world, because this world right now, Sheikh, is all connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you'll be surprised it's even better here than other places, so-called Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. Is to teach them. To teach these kids. To make time and make efforts to make sure they receive the needed knowledge. The knowledge that they need to know this thing. To understand this thing before uh, they grow up and their Islam is all based on just the customs and tradition. A young man, I ask a question, when you become a Muslim? He said, I was born Muslim, but I become a believer after I was 18. He said, I was born Muslim, but I was a believer when I become 18. I said, SubhanAllah, how would you mean? Explain a little bit. Um, my head is not that very good. I use short bus to go to school. <laughs> he said, I was Muslim because I was born Muslim. Everything I have is what my parents gave me, introduced to me. I have no um, uh, understanding of it until I become 18. Uh, because of the little efforts that my dad made and investment, he invested in me, uh, the little bit I know, I was able, mashallah, uh, to convince myself with everything that was given to me and I become a true believer. So every ummah, uh, as the Sheikh said, in Aradat, antakuna laha majd wa karama wa raha أو مستقبل فلا بد أن تكون أمة نشدة في وان تقدم وان رخاء وان that 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 uh, uh, position that we lost before we want uh, go back to that position we have to be back we have to be active we have to be active we have to have that desire to be active and be active uh, in um, teaching and preparing, he said, our Jil uh, Mustaqbal, the Shabbat. Now, uh, Imam uh, Sheikh Tarnish, we can stop here, inshallah. Anyone has uh, anything he wants to uh, share with us, inshallah, as well? Alhamdulillah. So, uh, now, someone back there? Now, I'm a sister in the back. Allow a few minutes, Shana. Sure. Go ahead. Place, brother. Khair, inshallah. You're cool. <laughs> sure. yes. Go ahead, sister, inshallah. Brother, I would like to share a um, comment on what you're saying. And I just wanted to say that one time I was with a group, and there was an African sister that grew up in Nigeria. And she was sitting with the Christians because she was then Christian because she said that. I used to be Muslim, and so now I'm Christian. Hmm. And so we were sitting at the same table, and I asked her, I said, Sister, how do you understand your your Bible? And I said, how do you read your Bible? She said, I read it in English. And she said, I grew up with the Quran, and I said, did you, did you have a Quran in your language, or do you know Arabic? And she said, no, I didn't have Arabic. It was an Arabic Quran. I said, did you have a... Quran in your language so you can get the meaning of the Quran? And she said no. And I said, well, sister, how can you leave what you never knew? Hmm. And I said to to at the table, my point being made is that I have taught in the Sunday schools. 
and, and as an educator today, I understand that until you gain meaning, there is no comprehension. That's like me going and teaching my children their lessons in French, and they cannot comprehend French. How much will they have at the end of the day? So I, in the last 20 years, have seen that the biggest problem facing the Muslim Ummah did not begin in America, did not begin in Europe. <coughs> when they were in their countries, yes, they read the Quran, but they never took the time to read meaning. And if you see the average child today, you can bring any of them in here. And I will ask them, they can recite whatever, but they don't comprehend what they're even saying. And this is the destruction of the Muslim Ullah. You have given your children no meaning of what they're even saying. And, and, and this is the sad problem. And until people wake up to that, these got children that are walking around, and I, and I periodically, I will ask the average Muslim child, and I will say, Bismillah, what am I saying? And I don't even find them that even understand that fact. So that's where we're going to start. You better make sure that the children can even comprehend what they are reciting in the Quran so they can have meaning. Because the, the non-Muslims are aware of that now. And they are now taking Qurans and they are telling the children what it means, adults what it means, because there's no way. If someone tells you something, if you don't know, then you'll accept it. And so this has nothing to do with the non-Muslims, brother. This is something that the Muslims have created themselves. So when you say, learn the deen, what are you asking them to do? Learn the Arabic? Or should they know what they are learning and what the meaning is? Because this is what is not being done. MashaAllah. May Allah reward the sister for the beautiful MashaAllah um, uh, um, insight that she given. And uh, that is the, that is the, uh, uh, exactly what I was trying to explain, uh, that we're not given enough time for these children to learn. Um, in this two weekend hours, weekends, it's not much to be, to give these children. Um, definitely, um, the meaning is very, very important. And a good example that she gave um, uh, from um, the, 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 the lady from Nigeria and uh, most of African countries that, that are aware of it, the teaching of the Quran and the teaching of the Deen is just like a blind teaching. They that teach the meanings. Uh, a child, a sick children comes to my class, you know, they memorize Fatiha, they memorize Qul uh, Allah and all that, but if I open Qul Allah for them, they cannot recognize Qul Allah. They only memorize it. Forget about even knowing the meaning, they cannot even recognize what, which one is Qul Allah and which one is Qul Allah. So, uh, like I said, the emphasis, we need to make changes. We need to uh, 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 have more uh, uh, emphasis and emphasize more on this uh, knowledge, this deen, Islamic team and teach our kids properly, including the meaning and everything. Without that, subhanAllah, it's just going to be uh, more and more problem. Allah Allah. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sallam. Inshallah, you mentioned the key that our children, they don't have an interest. They don't like it. But when he it starts to be wrong is when we miss them when they are younger. That's where we get it wrong. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, He's the one who gives you what? The Asama, Wal Abisar, Wal Abida. Three things. He's the one who gives you what? The hearing. The child is born the hearing, right? And the what? Sama, the sight, and the heart. This represents to fall in love. Because in order for me to love, I have to see, I have to hear. Then I'll be attracted, then I'll be falling in love with. So our children, when they're born, 
They born in wrong place. They grow up in wrong place. They spend time with the wrong people. How do you want them to fall in love? <coughs> Every one of us, I'm the first one. Right? The baby, when they born, they never know masjid. And unfortunately, we already learned and they say, we say that the baby is not going to be on masjid until he's 70 years old. But I remember that child that we fall in love what they give, they will see. They will fall in love what they they hear. That's what they will fall in love. I don't understand. Yes. Like when, they, when, they, when the child born see masjid, go in the masjid, play in the masjid, if you come to ask that child where your place you want to go, the first time we tell where? Masjid. The masjid. But our child, your children is not that. They don't know the masjid for that. And number two, all of us will have the agenda for our children. If you ask us, we say that, okay, my children always sleep early. They have to sleep early tomorrow, they have a school. Okay? They have a school means they don't pray well. They don't pray in share. Means they don't well. They don't even pray fajr. Automatically here, it's not going to work. If you're going to bring salah, it's heavy for him. Because we already present the item which is dear to us is what? Well. School. Without saying it, that you already present the child, they already saw, they already hear, they understand, that's most important. So when you come to say you love this one, it's something you try to reverse, which you already teach you. This is like, if I, I say you are, you, are, you are correct, that's the beginning where it's wrong. If I say now you were wrong, and then now you are correct. So um, it doesn't come together. It's as we change. What do our children we really want them to be? Like in America, we say saying is what? Believing. Says believing. So the children never see the Muslim, never see the master, never see. And you want today to believe, to, to, I mean, to, to fall in love with the Quran, with everything? No, it'd be hard. The problem is we have to go back. We understand this science. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hearing, sight, and heart. Present the love. In order the, the, the best to the children to fall, in love, to, love, to fall in love with Allah is for them to, 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 to see the masjid, to them to see what? To see the Muslim, is them to read the word of Allah, to read the, frequently that they will fall in love because they are yours before they go to school. Once they go to school, they're not yours. So as long as you have them this 24, let them what they can hear, what they can see, what they can interact, is Allah. That's how inshallah to reverse that. So if we don't do that, Allah Allah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We were talking about this just prior to the Imam's meeting in the hallway. And you know, different um, parents had these different views. But I was saying that, you know, we're missing the, the example that we should set. And it doesn't have anything to do with what well, Allah has decreed if the child will be on the straight path or if they will go astray as a test for you. But, you know, in the beginning, the child doesn't um, do anything but look up to the parents. As you mentioned the hadith, you know, the parents are the one that change to make them Jew or, you know, um, fire worshiper. So if the example is set, you know, in the house with, you know, the Quran being played and different things on a constant basis, like the Sheikh is saying, that child will develop a love for that. And the, 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 the way the Sahaba used to teach their children when they were young, they would concentrate on them just memorizing Quran. Because for them to learn the meaning at, at small ages would be too much. But they had a basis and a love for it. Then as they got a little bit older, then they would teach them basic meaning. And then once they became like Shabab or people dealing with the society, then they would emphasize uh, a more um, comprehensive meaning and application. You know, so we don't do these things. You know, we play all of this um, Allah Mustan movie and music and, you know, B.B. King and Rita Franklin and then the hip hops of the 70s and 80s. And then when the child gets 10, 11, 12, we expect them to perform. And, you know, this is kind of like hypocritical. So it goes back to us. You know, we have to set the example. It's us. And, 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 and it's lastly, us. And, uh, Ibn Ibn Taymiyyah mentions Ijma' al-Qur'an nazala bil haruf al-ma'an That the Qur'an was sent down consensus with the letters and the meaning 
So you can never get away from teaching the meaning of the Quran. If, if so, then this is not teaching Quran. So may Allah help us to you know, realize this and help us to correct these affairs. Allah uh, Because the time, I'm sure there are a lot of points I'd like to say, but one point, I uh, just quickly. Uh, because uh, Brother Zed, he mentioned the introduction to you. He said something life coaching about you. I don't know if you said life coach. I hear this well. Mm. Uh, anyway, uh, my point is uh, when you hire a teacher to teach your son any subject, forget about what a subject, math or something, you, you always you see a review of this teacher. If he's a good teacher, and mm -hmm. a good thing, you hire him. You mm -hmm. give him high, high price, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Now, because we will be teachers for our kids, before we concentrate about the kids, mm -hmm. we'll make all conference about the kids, mm -hmm. lecture about the kids. Uh -huh. So we need, exactly, this is a logo under life question. We have to teach our, we have to make conference or lecture. Mm -hmm. How you, father, mother, kids, language. Yeah. 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 if you don't have it, you can't give. When we talk about that, we don't want to say teach the parents Quran to teach their kids, no. Mm -hmm. Teach the parents know. Quran and what does it mean? And lifestyle, how social, especially mm -hmm. the social skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, to his Islamic way. That's what it is, the parents. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Salatu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Salatu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I just uh, have a two, uh, couple of things I would like to add uh, to Sheikh Abdullah. Mm -hmm. What he was talking about, uh, the born in the wrong place and the raised up in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. We do not blame that the people came here and born in the wrong place or mm -hmm. or not. We we are not the danger is not about the, 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 the area. Mm -hmm. It is not about the corruption around us. It's not about the bad companions. The khatar, the danger is about the parents. They are not caring about the tarbiya imaniya. Mm -hmm. How to raise your children in in, in, in tarbiya imaniya. How to give them the tarbiya imaniya. This is the about the parents. Mm -hmm. Parents is the main thing. <laughs> the main thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, you heard the hadith. Uh, about, uh, nah, you, you nah, how nah. The blame went to the parents. Yeah. So a blind could not lead a blind. Yeah. And you could not get milk out of rum. <laughs> so you did not start with the, the parents. children. Nah. The parents themselves, they missing the issue. Nah. They don't have time for the deed. The okay. desire. They don't have the desire. So how are you expecting a parent who is not interested in his deen other than Jum'ah prayer that he's huh? going to produce yeah. a better yeah. child? Yeah. And about what the sister said, if you allow me, that when Aisha Radalana been questioned about the behavior of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his characteristic was the Quran. That means it was not a memorization of Quran, okay. but acting the Quran mm -hmm. from the Sahaba. We used to learn the 10 verses, and after this we put them in action, and after this we will learn another two verses. To such a degree that it's been reported that Ibn Umar memorized Surah Al-Baqarah in eight years. Mm. Today you have a children memorize the whole Quran in three years and two years. Yeah. But this is not the proper system. Mm -hmm. The proper system that we found somebody learned only one surah in eight years. Why? Because he learned these ten verses when they put it in action. So they not only understand, they, under, they learn it. They understand it, put it in action. Now I'm going to go to the next ten verses. Thank you. MashaAllah. The last thing, this is the first point I would like to mention about what I had to Sheikh Abdullah. Mm. Uh, lastly, about Alhamdulillah, by the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon me, I have been teaching Quran since uh, 15 years ago. Alhamdulillah. And uh, I'm assistant Imam of Sheikh Mawlid in Durham. MashaAllah. Uh, when we teach Quran, you have to know and realize that you have to make something interested in the Quran what you teach. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I have a couple of questions <coughs> I have to ask the students. How many animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran? Or how many birds? Or how many? Some of them, they mention many, many, many of names, mm -hmm. but they forget some names. And I said, Asad. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Asad in the Quran? Mm -hmm. Where is in the Quran? <laughs> it's not there. Mm -hmm. But the meaning of the Quran, <laughs> 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 
Qaswara, what's the name? A name of the line. Mm -hmm. One of the name of the line. Mm -hmm. So what is that? I said, as I mentioned, you have to make the Quran something interesting for the people to learn and to memorize and to explain what it is. It's not, we are not like birds, mm -hmm. just to be to mm -hmm. yeah. The subject is bigger than one lecture. Uh -huh. Alhamdulillah, we talk about it many, many times in CIC, and the lecture is still recording, and we learn it every day. But what I want to say to everybody today is never too late. Mm. Okay. Parents. He's still alive. He gets the warning. Mm. He gets the mu'adha today. Even if you start today, inshallah, never too late. Bakula. <laughs> if you have kids, buckle up. Share it. One of the suggestions to do a solution for this is like you do a plan how to like to do a small lecture for kids as you present like some Sahaba what they do on before or some meaning of the Quran as a lecture and you try to do like a plan how to give gift for who can uh, mm -hmm. answer question like right things. That's you know. yeah, yeah. yeah. To encourage them that to they go back to study the Quran and about the Islam. The kids, the kids are ready. Yeah. Yeah. We, there's an ad, government ad imam on the television I love about anti-drug ad. ad. It says, children are listening. Are you talking? It says, children are listening. Are you talking? So the thing is, children are ready. You know, for abawahu yuhawu idhanihi awu yudasya. Yansha'ul fityan, nashi'atul fityan alama. Awadahu, Abu. Abu. But so, sometimes you find some cases they are they, they convert to Islam and then parents still like Christian. Yeah, well, when I want to correct is when uh, uh -huh. I didn't say uh, wrong place means place. No, mm -hmm. wrong place means we there are children we take them to grow up to see what they're not supposed to see. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this wrong stuff means. We put them, they listen to things which they're not supposed to listen to. Yeah. Because it means, we, um, I mean, the right place is, let's the child grow up, see a master, see a Muslim, mm -hmm. so praying. So, uh, even just see, take them when they read, when they see, he fall in love with all. Mm -hmm. So when he go to first the disbeliever, first he have a love in the heart. Right? So he have an interest. But if he doesn't have that, he will never fall in love, he doesn't have an interest. Do whatever you want to. <laughs> At the end, Sheikh, like the, Imam, the Sheikh said, it's a lesson for parents. We walk out of here with one thing for parents. You know, you heard, we are the problem. What I, if you have children, what are you going to do different? Well, that makes it easy. Catch with our children, inshallah, and we can catch with God and the lunch. What I'm asking you is that please, we're going to allow max 10 minutes for those who do not have wudu to get ready, and by the time we make salah, <coughs> we brought us for a, a delay for our flights for half an hour to 40 minutes. So please, kindly. We hear, inshallah, immediately after this to get ready for salah. And. One o'clock. One second. Huh? Huh? Was it two o'clock, inshallah? Two o'clock? Okay. We can <coughs> pray. 1.15, does that mean we're going to have the second lecture before lunch? Third lecture. Yes. The third lecture. Yes. Is this okay? Yeah. You guys can hold it? Yes. <laughs> is, is the lecturer here? Excuse me? The lecturer. The one who's going to lecture. give the lecture. Yes, yeah, <coughs> sure. Right. Brother Abdullah, where are you? Don't worry about it. Oh. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> No, sitting down here beside okay, me. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yes, <laughs> uh, uh, Sheikh, there's a, one, one, one minute, inshallah. Speaking of the sacrifice, we were talk, speak, uh, explaining about the parents. On my way, I was talking to one sister who lives here, and she used to work full time. And she told me now she only worked two days. On the phone, coming here. 
I said, oh, okay, mashallah, she said, because kids are grown up, and um, I, as a parent, I have to sacrifice to give them more time, drive them to the, to the masjid every evening or afternoon class for Islamic class. SubhanAllah, I was going to give this example when I was explaining about the sacrifice and it skipped my mind. And I but, want to give an example about last night, I really was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. About at least eight children, they came to spend the night in the mosque. But this is not an opportunity for mosque, nothing. Every one of them came with his cell phone or the iPad and <laughs> until 2.30 in the morning, I keep almost fighting with them. Mostly, and after this, I go outside. By the time you come back, they have a game, playing game, in a time that you're supposed to be sleeping, and in the mosque, the house of Allah. You can see how serious it is. So even when they are getting the opportunity to be in the Islamic environment, they are here with their body, not with their soul or their mind. And this is not about our guest or our here eight children from Colombia as well as from the visitors. Everybody until 2.30, 2.30 in the morning. And they, each one of them, I did not find one of them studying Quran on the iPad. All of them have games. Music, uh, Afarit, name. But inshallah, with the Baha'i, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah yuslah hum. Allah yuslah hum, inshallah. Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah